A dictator who ruled through fear and violence, Omar al-Bashir's name is burned into Sudan's history for all the wrong reasons. From orchestrating mass killings and ethnic cleansing to unleashing brutal militias on innocent civilians. How could one man seize a nation and lead it into such darkness? Omar Hassan Ahmad al-Bashir was born on January 1, 1944, in Hosh a small village north of Khartoum, Sudan. His early life was modest, with his family engaged in farming. After completing his primary education, al-Bashir joined the Sudanese army in 1960. His military career advanced rapidly as he received training at the Egyptian Military Academy in Cairo and later at the Sudanese Military College in Khartoum. He participated in the Yom Kippur War of 1973, supporting Egyptian and Syrian forces against Israel. Al-Bashir's growing military experience and connections within the armed forces would lay the groundwork for his future political ambitions. He honed his leadership skills, particularly as the commander of an armored parachute brigade, becoming a prominent figure in the Sudanese military by the 1980s. In 1989, Sudan was in turmoil, both politically and economically. The country was grappling with a long-running civil war and Prime Minister Sadiq al-Mahdi's democratically elected government struggled to maintain control. On June 30, 1989, al-Bashir, along with other high-ranking military officers, orchestrated a bloodless coup d'etat. The coup swiftly overthrew al-Mahdi's government, dissolved parliament and suspended the constitution. Al-Bashir emerged as the leader of the Revolutionary Command Council for National Salvation, the new ruling junta, and assumed the roles of head of state, prime minister, and minister of defense. Although Western nations, including the United States, condemned the coup, al-Bashir's regime found support from some Arab and African countries. Once in power, al-Bashir moved swiftly to consolidate his control. He banned political parties and trade unions, repressed opposition, and placed tight restrictions on the media. His regime became increasingly authoritarian, marked by human rights abuses. Al-Bashir relied heavily on security forces to maintain order, creating an environment of fear and oppression. In 1996, Al-Bashir sought to legitimize his rule through elections. However, the elections were widely criticized as fraudulent, with opposition parties boycotting or facing severe restrictions. Despite this, Al-Bashir was declared the winner with a dubious mandate. One of the key elements of Al-Bashir's regime was the imposition of Sharia law across Sudan. This move was seen as a way to consolidate his Islamist credentials, who formed a key part of his support base. However, the implementation of Sharia law was often harsh and discriminatory, particularly toward women and non-Muslims, exacerbating divisions within the country. Although the Second Sudanese Civil War had started in 1983, al-Bashir's rule intensified the conflict. The war pitted the predominantly Arab and Muslim North against the mainly Christian and animist South. Ethnic tensions, resource disputes and the imposition of Sharia law fueled the violence. Al-Bashir's government pursued a military solution, leading to a brutal campaign in southern Sudan. The Sudanese armed forces, along with allied militias, were accused of committing widespread atrocities, including massacres, torture and the use of child soldiers. The conflict left millions displaced and claimed countless lives through violence, famine and disease. Despite the ongoing violence, sustained international pressure and negotiations led to the signing of the Comprehensive Peace Agreement CPA, in 2005. The CPA granted autonomy to southern Sudan and paved the way for a referendum on independence, setting the stage for South Sudan's eventual secession in 2011. While the peace process in southern Sudan was ongoing, another conflict erupted in the western region of Darfur in 2003. Rebel groups in Darfur took up arms against the government, accusing it of marginalization and discrimination. Al-Bashir's government responded with overwhelming force, unleashing the Sudanese armed forces and an allied Arab militia against the civilian population. The conflict in Darfur was marked by mass killings, rape and torture. The international community was horrified by the atrocities and the United Nations declared it the world's worst humanitarian crisis at the time. The US government labeled the violence as genocide, 
accusing al-Bashir of orchestrating a campaign of ethnic cleansing. In response, the international community imposed sanctions and provided humanitarian aid, while the United Nations deployed a peacekeeping force to Darfur. However, efforts to resolve the conflict were hampered by the Sudanese government's lack of cooperation. In 2009, the International Criminal Court, ICC, issued an arrest warrant for al-Bashir, charging him with war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide for his role in the Darfur conflict. In April 2019, after months of sustained demonstrations, al-Bashir was finally ousted by the military, ending his 30-year rule. His downfall marked a new chapter in Sudan's history, that, though the scars of his regime continue to shape the nation. Stay curious, stay informed, stay tuned to Aeroshapers.